Hello everybody, it's Brandon here with another tutorial. This tutorial was inspired by a book I've been reading. It's by Rick Snowman and it's called The Dance Music Manual. I highly recommend you get this book if you're producing EDM. The newest edition came out about a month ago and it covers everything from music theory to synthesis and sound design and even publishing and promoting. But this isn't a book review, it's a tutorial, so let's get started. Most of you probably already know how to make a sub bass. You just play a sine wave at a very low frequency. But not all sub basses are created equally, though. I'm going to play you the sub bass I've been using in most of my songs, followed by the sub bass we will be making today. First, though, it's worth mentioning that due to the low frequencies of sub basses, this tutorial isn't going to do you much good if you're not listening on headphones or monitors. Also, I want you to pay attention to the peak levels of these two subs. But, uh, here they are. As you can see, volume is not the same thing as power. Now this sub bass can be made in many different ways, and you'll see why later. But I'm just going to show you a simple version to make this go quicker. So first things first, go ahead and create and initialize a Thor. As you can see, these are all made in Thor. Right click, reset device, or initialize. Okay. So to hear the sub, you're going to want notes in the C3 octave is a good place for them, just to be able to hear the changes that we're making. So I'm just going to copy and paste these over and solo this Thor. Now in the Thor, we're going to want to make a second analog oscillator on a sine wave. And on the first analog oscillator, bring down the octave of the sawtooth by one. Now we're going to adjust the amp envelope. We're going to want to set the decay all the way down and the sustain all the way up. So as we hold down the keys, the sub doesn't lose volume over time. Now this is really important. On our filter over here, you want to set the envelope amount all the way down. Now you could play around with the filter envelope later on, but it's not going to really sound right with the sub bass. And we're also going to want to turn the filter cutoff about half the way down. And we're going to want to turn the filter resonance all the way up. And it's going to sound kind of weird, but... Kind of freaky, but... Uh, what this is, what's happening right here with the resonance all the way up is that the filter is starting to feed back into itself and it's called self-oscillation. This filter self-oscillation produces a sine wave with the frequency at the filter cutoff. So whatever this is set to is the frequency of the sine wave. So if we turn this filter frequency all the way down, we'll start to get a sub bass. Pretty awesome, except for the fact that it's only gonna play at this frequency, which means you can only play one note until you turn this knob over here all the way up, which is the key follow knob, which adjusts the filter frequency to the note that you're playing. So if I turn this up while these different notes are playing, you can hear we're getting different tonalities. Almost done. Now add another low pass filter in the third filter spot. We're going to use this filter to get rid of the clicking that we hear at the beginning. Alright, so to do this, you're going to want to turn the envelope amount all the way down again and just bring down the frequency until the clicking stops. Alright, and now we're done. Um, as far as I have experimented, uh, changing the oscillators before the slow pass filter right here doesn't make a huge difference. It, I don't even know if it makes a difference at all. You can kind of hear it, but. I mean, play around with it. That's what's cool about this, you know, about learning something new. But you can make plenty of changes to the sound after this filter. Um, other things you could do with this sub uh, would be important to sidechain it. 
you might want to make it wobble you could do that with um, this or even this one this low pass filter I have a tutorial click over here to see that on how to make things wobble um, you could distort it you could compress it or you could even bop it but it's important that you don't muddy up the bottom end of your mix so you want to be careful not to do too much to the sub the whole reason that we're doing this sub instead and it sounds powerful is because that it's a pure sine wave like a really pure sine wave and if you start adding distortions and other things to it it'll lose its power and uh, another important thing to remember with sub basses is that you want it to be as mono as possible that way there won't be any destructive interference in the sound waves as they exit the speakers which is important if you want them to be powerful all right the last thing i want to mention about producing sub basses is that you make sure you're using the right equipment i produce on 8kg k44s which claim to respond to frequencies as low as 18 hertz and i mix on monitors if your equipment cannot respond to frequencies as low as at least 30 hertz for instance, it would probably be a good idea to high pass any frequencies under 30 hertz. If you can't hear what's going on down there when you are producing or mixing, when you hear your music on a more responsive system, you may be displeased with any mud that you hear that you weren't able to detect. But as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.